the main focus for today. Um, so I had asked you to undertake um, a first exercise uh, for, for this class. Uh, that exercise saw you extending a model that we had built together during our last session on, on last Thursday um, and extending it to represent um, waning uh, of immunity. Something again of tremendous current relevance uh, because indeed one of the reasons the current um, variant spreads uh, so far so widely um, is that uh, it's not only extraordinarily transmissible witness uh, spread through um, ventilation systems, but, um, uh, but also can infect people uh, who have uh, been uh, previously infected or with added difficulty infect even those who have been, uh, um, been vaccinated. Uh, and uh, those, those people who have been vaccinated to be really well protected um, um, is, is uh, out for, for infection is very difficult. Um, we can get rates of something like 75, 80% with, uh, with recently boosted individuals. Um, so one of its defining features, one of them that we spotted as early as the, um, shortly after it was identified in South Africa is that it can reinfect people. So people that are recovered are no longer susceptible. And indeed, that was the focus of the little exercise um, uh, that I, with which I challenged you. Um, so I'd like to turn to that. Um, I'd like to, uh, uh, to, to turn to the model that we built and um, talk about how some of you might have uh, gone about trying to capture the waning of immunity uh, for this very model. Being an eclipse-based uh, method, we can, we can zoom in on any one window temporarily by double-clicking it, double-click it again, we'll, we'll kind of unfocus it. Um, and of course, we can, um, we can zoom in in terms of um, kind of the visual, visual appearance here or magnify it. Um, so this is the model um, that we built together last time in the waning moments of class. We finished it. Um, those of you um, who, who um, undertook the exercise should all have um, approached adding waning of immunity in a certain way. How did you approach it? Can anyone, can anyone speak out, raise their hand here? How did you um, try to represent waning of immunity? So Kenneth, please. Uh, uh, yes, I'd like to um, yeah talk about how I um, uh, approached it. Yeah. I had a flow from recovered to receptible or to, mm -hmm. sorry, to susceptible. Yep. And Good. I then I then also um, added a parameter mean time uh, immune, which yep. was 365 days Good. as per the um, uh, uh, assignment outline. And then I just um, yeah yeah yeah. And then I um, I divided the um, the yep. recovered by the mean time um, immune to get that um, flow value. And it was just that simple um, edit that I made to the model. Exactly. And the reason that that parameter carried the value three, uh, 365, um, the reason it could hold that value is because the model time unit is days. Um, if, if the model time unit had been years, 365 days would be one year and we'd use one. Um, but it's because the, the time unit is days that we use that number 365 meant 365 days. Um, so that's exactly right. And I'll, I'll, I'll call up um, my kind of um, rendition of this uh, SEIRS model, which uh, is depicted as follows. So this is flow out of recovered into susceptible. And it occurs uh, with, uh, it's governed by the number recovered and this parameter. Um, and the formula um, specifically governing it um, that combines those is recovered divided by this. Um, uh, so this division um, 
reflects um, one of the classic uh, features of this sort of construct, which is called a, a first order delay. Um, and uh, that will form part of our discussion today is going into these first order delays. But before we kind of go down um, that direction, are there any questions um, uh, about this um, uh, or comments people want to make before we talk about so this is adding to our theory, the waning of immunity. This, this model depicts kind of a, a causal theory of, of how infection spreads and how certain factors like the meantime infectious, um, the concrete ways in which they change the situation. Um, it depicts at any one time, the kind of state of the system and how it evolves. Um, and, uh, and we've added to that theory with this, um, uh, we've elaborated with this uh, with this extra flow, um, with this depiction of this process of losing immunity that occurs um, at a certain rate or a certain mean time. Um, that's independent of how long someone has been and recovered. They have the same chance of 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 going down here as as anyone else, no matter how long they've been there. And the, the chance is one over mean time until winning immunity in days per day, a chance. Or alternatively, we say it's a memoryless process where they have an exponential residence time here. The chance that they remain in this state goes down exponentially. Um, and, uh, and those are two equivalent ways of, of looking at it. But the, the basic depiction is we have an average time um, until they flow back. Um, so any questions about that before we talk about its dynamic implications? Because this theory is precise enough to be able to run it and see what gives, like go figure, what is the implication of this theory in terms of what we'd expect to see in terms of the behavior scene? Um, so any questions about this first before we go and look at that dynamic implication? Question. Okay, uh, Professor, yeah, I have just a, a question. Question about the any logics. Um, yeah. When I click on a flow or uh, any variable, um, yeah. I'm not getting that side palette that you know where you can change the name and the values. Uh, if you can just kindly okay. guide me on that. Sure. You, if you go to view and you go to the properties window, you probably have the properties hidden like this. In which case, you won't see this. But if you go view properties you should see it. Now, it, it could pop up in a way that's um, hidden. Like, uh, if I minimize this, it could be over here. And you'd say, well, I don't see it here. Oh, oh, no, it pops out. OK, there in a most uh, strange sort of way. Um, but um, uh, you know, one way to do it would be, if it is checked already, uncheck it, and then check it again. And that it should pop back up um, there. Uh, if it doesn't, I'm glad to work with you during office hours to help with that. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, I showed up. Yeah. Okay, great. Any other questions um, about the interface or anything else? I think there's a few in the chat. Okay, awesome. Let's let's go see if I can immerse myself in the chat. And there's probably going to be a big kind of uh, window on top of you. Um, okay, so... Um, uh, let's see here. I'll try to do these in order. Um, yep, 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 yep. Happy, happy. Uh, uh, adding a parameter about time taking to end. Yep, that's right. Um, how do you change the model for, from example, seconds to days? Yeah. So um, in the model as a whole, um, so if you click on the model, this is kind of a, a project explorer. It's in the projects um, window, um, not the palette, but the projects window. Uh, you click there and there, there should be a, an item here when describing the model, basic assumptions and, and so on. Um, one of them is, day, is the time unit and, and you can pick uh, days um, for that time unit. Hopefully that's helpful. Um, uh, uh, okay, uh, so may I, I'll be with you in a minute after, after these questions. Um, uh, can you show... Um, uh, how you mean the flow go under the stocks? I'm not sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sorry. That was a little bit of uh, art. Um, thank you. Um, so I am going to uh, 
uh, wreak havoc upon this. Um, boom. Um, I'm going to delete it and I'll go through the exercise of adding it. Okay. Um, so, first of all, I added from the palette uh, this new parameter, dragged it over, made it 365.25. The 0.25 is, is optional. Um, and then um, I, I dragged the flow in. Now, you're quite right that wrangling this is, is a bit of a pain. Um, let's first name it, right? Um, um, I'll call it waning of immunity in camel case like that. Um, and um, now if I go kind of hitch it up here, I get something that is um, uh, that, that functions, but is hideously ugly. Um, so let's make something at least less ugly. So I'm going to do control Z and get it out. So, so how, do I, how do I bend it to my will? Um, these days, I'm more concerned about the government uh, taking action to bend other things, like the curve um, that's filled up our hospitals. We're probably one or two days away from breaking the delta, um, uh, the delta uh, uh, maximum of, uh, of patients hospitalized for COVID, incidentally. Um, or, uh, uh, I, I won't say more because I know internal information, but uh, that's the sad truth of it. But if you double click on one of these flows, you can see there's this little handle that appears. It looks like a kind of blibbit. Um, you folks are probably innocent of blibbits, but um, uh, these, uh, these things can be dragged around. And uh, but those can form bend points within this. When you add one of these handles or blibbits, um, you can bend this thing to your will. Um, and by adding the appropriate number of them, hey, come on, get, get one over there. I can kind of um, bend this round and uh, you know have a have a nice um, arc to it. So this is how I did that. I, I should have clued you folks into that. I'm sorry, that's uh, that's my bad. But um, this is kind of how I how I did it. Um, and uh, and and I did that. And then I you know hitched up uh, this guy uh, to it. And of course this flow. I mean, uh, this flow, ah, ah, this got, got out, okay. Um, so this flow is only going to carry people if there's recovered people. So it's got to depend on recovered, right? Like, you're not going to have people waning in immunity unless there's people whose immunity can wane, um, the people in the recovered state. So uh, we go something like that, and then we put in here the appropriate thing and make sure you use control space or command space or alt space or whatever it is in a Mac. Um, so, so we want recovered control space, recovered divided by mean time until waning of immunity in days. Boom, um, we're done. So that's how I, I rested that to my will. Oh my gosh, look at that. What, what am I doing? I don't know how that sort of dislodged, but make sure it's green. Green is the color and stocks and flows of the game. Um, okay, um, uh, can you show how to add more nodes to a flow? I just, I did, yeah, the triangle, I'm familiar with triangle. Um, <laughs> triangle, um, uh, the tyranny of the triangles. Yeah, you don't want a triangle. Um, uh, okay, um, so that's, uh, uh, that's, uh, that's that. Somaya, you had a question or a comment too. Uh, yeah, hi, um, Professor. Uh, I had uh, one uh, error in my um, running, um, yeah. uh, but uh, my uh, por uh, my program uh, is run, uh, but no. uh, had uh, one error. Um, yeah. If uh, it is possible for me uh, at the end of class, uh, show you. Sure, but I'll also show you some things that can lead to errors. Okay, so um, let's let's use this as a teaching moment. Okay, um, so um, I am familiar with uh, digital dysfunction of the sort you've described, and it can be caused by a, a variety of, of for a variety of reasons. Okay, um, if it's occurring statically, meaning it's not at, not when you run the model, it's not at runtime. It's when you're building the model or designing the model. Um, there are certain types of errors that come up there. Um, 
One classic one that's kind of uh, annoying is that um, if you don't have a flow here um, uh, between this thing and this thing, technically, you know, it's, it's still this, but it will be on a unhappy camper. You notice it has this little uh, X here. And it says recovered is used, but not expected. I mean, what, what do you mean by expected? You'll notice it's also shown over here. And that's a sign that it needs uh, a link. It yearns for a link. And so by putting in a link, it will then become a happy camper again. And it's a similar thing if I were to violate this. Um, you know, I could have other problems, right? I could say, um, uh, instead of recovered, I could say foobar or something like that. And it won't be a happy camper with that. Um, and if you look up here, you can see uh, can see that. If you happen to click here, you can do it. But a good suggestion is turn on your problems window and that will show you kind of its complaint. Um, now its complaint is not always uh, revealing. Uh, it's not pathonomic um, to use the language of medicine. It doesn't say what the problem is, but it, um, it gives you a hint often. And so I would turn on your problems window because the sooner we know about problems, the sooner we can fix them. Um, and, and that will let us uh, uh, fix those, uh, fix those uh, problems. Um, they're identified in the problems window. There are pathological cases where it won't put something in the problems window, uh, but things can go bad at runtime. And uh, I'll try to uh, reproduce a runtime error shortly. But those are some reasons that you might have uh, problems here. Um, uh, there might be um, might be other reasons uh, as well you could get. Um, for example, uh, if you write, if you connect something to a thing for which it's not used, like let's suppose I were to connect this to, I don't know, something weird, like I would connect it like that. And then it will say, hey, um, you know, uh, this meantime is not used, but it's expected. Meaning if I go and look at that and I look at the flow, um, it expects it to depend on this. That's what these links mean. But there's nothing referring to that in the, in the formula for that flow. So it's, it's saying like, hey, why are you, why are you, you know, why is there this link, but there's no dependence on it? Something's wrong. Something doesn't add up here. So that's another reason you might see, um, you might encounter uh, digital dysfunction. Um, so uh, anyway, I've got to add in, uh, I've got to replace foobar with recovered, um, recovered there. Um, okay, um, uh, any other questions? So this is all about the syntax and kind of the, the, the um, uh, the the framing the structure of the model, um, and um, uh, I'm going to um, come back to this because there's some things that it's not spotting that are more semantic errors here um, involving units, involving um, uh, factors, involving um, kind of the meaning of it, and we'll come back and and see that in a few minutes. It's not smart enough to, to spot those. You have to spot them. You have to be smart enough to, to reason through or judicious enough, careful enough. But structure, ladies and gentlemen, drives behavior. Um, so what sort of behavior was exhibited by this model compared to the original model? Can anyone say? Um, let's go back to the original model. This is the model we built in class. Maybe it's an old friend of yours. Maybe it's an old enemy of yours, but one way or the other, you're familiar with it. Um, so um, I asked you to examine this after 200 days. And I threw you a bit of a curveball with this because I didn't tell you how to do that in the interface. If you click, so when we run the model with assumptions, we run a scenario over here, a so-called experiment. X marks the spot um, for an experiment, okay? Um, and uh, if, you, if you click on one of those experiments, and in fact, you were to click, draw down this, this thing here, you'll actually see it says like, when do I stop this experiment? And I, 
It's right now it's set to never. Um, so it'll just run and run and run and run till the cows come home and beyond. Um, now we could choose it to stop at a specified time, time 200. Um, that would be convenient. But many of you probably struggled to see what was going on at time 200 per the assignment, um, per the exercise. So uh, I'll walk you through that. And then you know later you can come back and just change it to stop at time 200, a frequent option, okay? Um, uh, so anyway, uh, those are common options. Um, later we'll see for agent-based modeling, particularly we'll see this random number generation and for discrete event simulation, this random number generation makes our, um, it's also important. But for this model, this is deterministic. What goes on the next little bit is completely determined. Not by chance, um, not by the flip of a coin or the roll of a dice, but by um, the current state of the system. Um, okay, so um, let's let's go let's go run this. Um, so I'm going to right click on this scenario, and I'm going to say run. You could also use this little um, widget up here to choose to run the baseline. Um, you could also say up here, model run and choose which one you want to run. I'm going to run this one. Uh, I'm going to run with this. This is, I find this more, more easy. I click, right click on the scenario. Maybe it's mumble click on, on Max. I don't know, option click, command click, something click. Um, uh, you know how to do kind of the alternative click. Um, okay, so run. Um, and uh there we go and lo and behold it's it's running now um you can pause it with this um this little button down here you can alternate between running it and pausing it now down here on the lower right there's a little thing that looks like a settings menu with a kind of sort of stack to the lower right of it if you click on that you can see there's kind of a, a console or interface up here and as you run it the time shown in here will, will change. We'll also animate this model, okay? Now, um, first of all, I'll note that you can change the speed with which this model is, is simulating by pressing like plus, you can make it go faster. But I'm gonna pause it because I, I don't wanna run it all the way past 200 or then we'll be in a pickle. We'd have to restart it. So instead up here, I'm gonna pull down this little menu here, this here little menu. Um, uh, with the, the three three dots, okay? Um, and I'm gonna say run until time 200. Mm. Um, how did I do that? I went over here, I, I opened this up, I clicked here and I filled this in time until 200. And I'm gonna press this little button and it's gonna run it. I can make it go faster. I can make it go lickety split. Um, uh, with this button here. Um, and uh, this button runs it at the maximum speed possible. In general, it's animating it at a slower speed for system dynamics. It can, it can integrate it whip fast. It can run it forward whip fast, but it, it just wants to show you the dynamics. But if you press this virtual button, it will go as fast as it can. Um, okay, so I ran it to time 200. And you'll notice it says 200. So I can kind of go in and poke around and sort of see what's going on. And oh man, it's, you know, the number of people who are, who are ill um, really dropped from, from about uh, you know, 700 people at time 100, it's dropped to 150. It's kind of pesky. I, I, I kind of like it to show me from the beginning, but I, I didn't open this in time. I opened it too late. If I'd been artful, I would have opened it at the beginning. Um, and then so let's, uh, we can go and, and turn off virtual mode and I'm gonna restart it here. And I'm gonna open this up at the beginning here, time 20. Yeah, that's good. Um, look at that, it's rising. Um, like some recent things in our province. Um, and now it's starting to go down um, as it is from wastewater levels in some areas of our province and that's good. Um, so um, here it's falling, okay? Um, uh, so I opened this early enough, I could see the full trajectory. Um, this is the original model. 
This is the model without waning of immunity. And if we run it to time 200, there we go. Um, it will play this out. You see that it's largely disappeared. I mean, it's at extremely low levels here. Um, and I'll press virtual time just to finish it off. And you'll notice that the virtual time, there's 0.035 of a person who's currently infectious. Um, so roughly one right toenail or something like that. Um, and, uh, you know, that's, it's, it rose and it collapsed and um, it's, it's on the, the wane here. Um, uh, hopefully like our province will be uh, in another four to six weeks uh, thoroughly, uh, even in terms of, uh, uh, of case, case numbers and really drawing down our hospitalizations, which are bursting at the seams now. Um, so uh, this, is, uh, this is the SEIR model, rises and falls. That's structure drives behavior. This structure drove that behavior that you saw because it, people once recovered are persistently immune. They're immune for life. Um, there's no risk of them developing illness again. And so it follows that this structure will elicit that sort of behavior. Um, it's in the nature of things that this will produce this behavior. And you can see why it's a, you sometimes see people saying, well, garbage in, garbage out. If you, if you tweak any of these parameters, you can get anything you want. You can see that's not true. There's, there's no way we could get certain things, right? There's no way that this is gonna go up and stay high forever. There's, there's just no way. Um, there's no way it's gonna rebound in a big way with this model structure. It, it's, it's incompatible with that dynamic outcome, that behavior. So, so you have to be, you have to realize a lot of people have a very simplistic uh, idea in mind, idea mind of what a model is. And they think it's totally willy nilly, whatever, you just change the assumptions in the, these, these numeric assumptions and you get anything you want, you can fit anything. Total nonsense with these sort of models. Structure drives behavior. There's, from this structure, there is structure in the behavior that is produced that is, um, um, has, you know, fixed regularities that cannot be changed. What can be changed is how quickly it rises, how quickly it falls, but you're not going to change this to, you know, um, go up and down and up and down or, or you know, go and, um, and, and rebound, as we said, or start high and go, go down or what have you. It's not in the nature of things. And these models depict the nature of things. They depict a the theory, and this is the logical implication of the theory. Um, and that helps us more quickly debug, is our theory matching up against what we see in the world? It does this jibe with what we're observing, with the latest evidence? And so we refine our theory by refining our model. So with that comments, let's go to the other model. Let's go to the model that you folks built. Um, and uh, here we go. Um, boom. Um, we're going to open that up. And um, here is that model. This model has a different theory that's articulated. This theory is the same, except that you have waning of immunity. And my question is, my question posed to you for the, uh, the exercise was, does this theory give rise to behavior very similar to the old model or very different? or somewhere in between. Can anyone comment on that? Do you see, when I run this model, when I see the logical implications of this theory writ large by running this model, is it broadly the same behavior as before or different? Um, down the page, we're heading deeper into oh, the there are some similarities. Okay. Uh, waves behave according to the linear wave equation in both mediums. Hmm. Yeah, I enjoyed the uh, the the linear um, wave function as well and its evolution, um, but uh, it's it's best not that we share it with everyone in the class. Um, so uh, someone was trying to uh, get a word in edgewise while that video played. So anyone? Yeah, 
um, I, I heard a, a good voice and I'd like to, to amplify it, not the voice of the video as much as I admire the mathematics involved. Um, anyone? Uh, hello. Uh, yeah. So, sorry, uh, hey, um, yeah, I, the difference between the two models is after 200 days, um, there will be roughly 20,000 uh, and 30,000 people remaining infectious in the revised model. Yeah. Um, whereas the yeah, the original model is less than one, right? It was 0.035. There's a lot more than a, a toenail remaining here. Yeah, it's, it's like 20,000. And in fact, if we trace this out, uh, was anyone wanted to add to that? Because I did hear another voice initially. Um, Professor, I was, I was just going to add on that uh, I, uh, after 200 days, if you kind of look at, you know, 1,000 days or 2,000 days, you kind of yeah. see a pattern emerging where it, it's like almost a sine wave where it increases, decreases, increases between uh, yes. an upper and, and a lower bound. That's right. And there's this oscillatory behavior. And as we'll see, you may remember me talking with you about causal loop diagrams. And when you have a causal loop diagram with a delay, what do you see? Does anyone remember? If it's a balancing loop, so there was reinforcing loops that lead to unstable behavior, divergent behavior, behavior that builds on itself and builds on itself. One person infects two, infects four, infects eight. Um, there's other ones that are balancing, like we get hungry, we eat, and it balances that out. But when there's a delay, does anyone remember my comments on there? When there's a delay, what does it lead to? It'll it be a destabilization of the equilibrium of the system. Yeah, and it leads to oscillation. Um, it leads to oscillations when there's a delay. And this is a model where those delays lead to oscillations. It's delays associated with recovering amongst other things. So let's, let's go um, uh, call up this. And what we're going to do is um, with malice of forethought, we're going to call this up ahead of time, this little graph. Um, and we are going to then uh, go and run this to time 200 um, as we are wont. Um, so I, I uh, open that, um, entered, oh, I said 220, I meant 200. Um, and uh, there we go. And if I want to speed it up, uh, I can press that button. And uh, you'll notice that uh, it, it's, it's doing things I don't like, but um, we see that it is, um, uh, it's gone up to 37,000 people or something and, and mine. Um, and, uh, you know, I could continue to, to run that. I'll, I'll, I'll slow it down. I, I, I don't know. I want to see it evolve here. Um, come on. Um, time is going up, but I'll speed it up sort of in a manual way. And you'll notice that it's oscillating. Um, just as uh, the last uh, gentleman, your name, said. Um, so it, someone mentioned the oscillations. It's like a waveform. See that? Yeah. But this is awfully constricting. Um, you know, we, we're kind of limited by this little window. It's, um, let's go do something better than that. Come on, let's, 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 let's go. Let's, we can do better than that. We're computer scientists. We can add a widget that lets us display this. So over to the palette, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and uh, let's go. And we are going to add in here, down in the analysis palette, which looks a little bit like a, a probability distribution, cumulative and, and, and probability, uh, a sort of probability um, distribution that's non-cumulative. Um, we can, uh, we have a set of choices here. This is over in the palette. It may be behind your projects window. Um, and uh, I'd like to add in a time plot, okay? Um, so I dragged in, how did I do that? I dragged it in over to this window, okay? Um, and I'm going to arrange it so you can, you can see it there, right? Um, uh, maybe, maybe just to make better use of uh, screen real estate, I'll, I'll put it below it um, because this model is, is not awfully, it's, it's wider than it is tall. So I'm gonna put it below it. There we go. Um, so what did I do? I opened the other, I opened this model and I, I, I clicked here and I dragged in a time plot and I kind of futz with its size and I position it under this window. And I'm gonna say, um, uh, 
we'll say uh, uh, stocks time plot, okay? Um, and uh, I'll put it in camel, camel case now. There we go. Okay. And what's it going to plot out? It's going to plot out a value. And what value will it plot out? Well, I suppose I just want to see initially the number of people infectious. Um, so I'll say infectious, okay? Um, that's what I want to plot on this. Um, so again, dragged over from the palette, time plot, futzed with it, um, clicked on it in the properties window, named it stocks time plot. And I didn't change anything here except to fill in infectious. Okay, um, there we go. Um, so it is to plot the value of this stock, um, the number of people infectious. Okay. Um, uh, now, we could plot alternatively the fraction infectious. And, you know, that might be kind of nice, uh, but we'll leave it with just the stock right now. Now, the other thing which we need to do to head things off is there's this area of it called the data update, which you can go in and expand. Okay. Um, and if you scroll down, you'll notice there's kind of an annoying um, thing where it says like, display up to 100 latest samples, change that to 10,000. I, I don't want it to be a, an issue. Um, and just below that, so that's in the um, data update one. You, you don't have to frob any of the other settings, but just go to this display update on uh, 10,000. And then in the scale, make it a time window of impressive breadth if I might recommend it. I'm going to say, um, um, I'm, I'm going to set it to uh, 2,000 model time units, which are days, OK? OK, so I dragged it in, resized it, clicked there, uh, clicked on it, uh, went and changed stocks time plot, the value uh, infectious. I went down to this data update, expanded it, did a display up to 10,000. And then I went and I futzed with the scale to show a time window of 2000. An awful lot of futzing for a little idea, but we should be done. So having done that, let's go build our model. That's what this little one and zero thing is. And that, that allows us, you know, it will check the syntax of it. It'll check whether it understands it. And so you notice down here, it says build completed successfully. It's a happy camper. Okay, I wish all the 371 builds completed successfully. Um, okay, so uh, here in baseline, um, I'm going to right click on baseline and do run here. Um, and uh, now what you should see accompanying this, this flow, we should see a, a graph. And this graph won't be as limited and won't depend on us to kind of remember to go um, to go open it and all that sort of stuff. And what we'll see is it undergoing these kind of waveforms. Um, the waves are a little bit muted at this scale, but you can see them, it, it kind of goes and rebounds and so on. And we're gonna have an explanation for that mathematically um, in a later lecture. But um, this gives a sense of the dynamics here. Um, and you, know, you can probably pick up this window and drag it, to the other model and paste it in. And with a tiny bit of futzing, you could probably run it right there. What the heck, I, I'm gonna do it right now. Um, that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna go into the other model and I'm gonna say, yeah, sure, go close this one. And I'm gonna paste this, this little um, widget in. Hey, come on, why didn't you paste? Um, come on, oh my gosh. Oh, it, okay, it lost it from my clipboard. Well, forget it. Um, in any case, we have this very different dynamic. Ladies and gentlemen, structure drives behavior. Um, the structure of this model drives uh, the behavior observed. Uh, this model, um, the first model, lacked waning of immunity. It was in the nature of that theory, there's a lack of waning immunity, that we um, had behavior that had this sort of rise and fall and, and staying low. 
Um, it's in the nature, by contrast, of this other model, um, um, the, the model with loss of waning of immunity. Yeah, really not doing it. Um, uh, where you can look, where you can uh, wane, allow immunity to wane, that you get um, endemic um, infection. It stays in the population. In fact, it oscillates as it approaches that. It shoots up, but never goes down towards disappearance. It kind of oscillates around some equilibrium value and approaches it. Um, a value at which all of those stocks um, uh, are at a level that all the that they're in total balance. The inflow um, to exposed the infection, the rate of number of people coming in through infection exactly equals the number leaving through infectiousness or by becoming infectious by completing their latency. The the number of people coming per day becoming infectious equals the number recovering per day. The number recovering per day equals the number of waning of immunity per day, and the number of waning immunity per day equals the number of getting infected per day. It's in total balance. For every stock, the inflow equals the outflow, and therefore the stock is flat, just as if you're in a bathtub and the rate of the flow coming in is, say, two, two liters per minute, and going out is two liters per minute, the bathtub will remain, will remain um, at the same level. Um, that uh, is the difference between these two models. This has a persistent equilibrium associated with it. But it too has structure, regularities at runtime. It doesn't produce any old result. The result that it produces is the necessary logical consequence of this structure. Um, and by choosing different structures, by, by uh, considering different structures, exploring different structures, we can account for different behaviors we see in the world. Um, we can explain patterns we see in the world. Um, we can test our theories against the world by encoding our theory in a precise, runnable fashion and seeing the degree to which the behaviors induced match up with what we see in the world. So a um, bit of a lesson from this. Uh, any questions about this before I go on to talk a little bit more formally about some of the basic building blocks we've seen here. Any questions or comments on this? Nothing? Okay. Um, so let's, um, let's build on our knowledge by jumping to um, some formal discussion of what these building blocks are out of which we have built this model. Because there's some of them, at the most basic level, it looks like stocks and flows, simple stocks and flows. But there's a higher level building block we've already used. And it has a specific name. And the name, ladies and gentlemen, is the first order delay. So um, let's go jump to uh, to some slides uh, exploring that, okay? Um, and uh, I will, uh, that, that's an exciting one. Um, uh, okay, um, so uh, here, um, yeah, so there's actually um, two components that I want to speak about in this lecture, and uh, uh, I'll, I'll cover this one first. So, um, we built that model out of stocks and flows. Um, but there's a pattern that was recurring again and again in that model. Um, so if we go up and look at it, we see the same pattern basically here for this flow. You notice the formula for the flow. Um, we see it again here for this flow. You see the formula for the flow. And you see it again here. You see that formula for the flow. What do all of those formulae, what do all of those different, those three different particular formulas have in common? Anyone? I think they're all, uh, Professor, I think they're all measured by people over uh, quantity of time. Excellent, excellent. So it's people times some, constant or people divided by a constant, you know, you could say 
um, it's people time, you know, divided by A or people times one over A, whichever you want, way you want to treat, but that's exactly right. Um, the, the outflow for any of these stocks um, is given by the value of the stock times um, or alternatively divided by some constant. Uh, here, here, and here. Um, this flow is a notable exception. Um, this is a nonlinear flow. It, it actually doesn't just depend on susceptible, it depends also on, on infectious, for example, hence the loop here. But, um, but these other three, it's the same pattern. And that pattern, a stock coupled with an outflow that is proportional to it, that the outflow depends linearly on the value of the stock, that is um, something which is called a first order delay, okay? Um, and as we'll see, the name reflects the fact that the outflow to the stock is a delayed version of any inflow to the stock. So for example, this recovery is a delayed version, um, not precisely delayed, but delayed in kind of a smeared way on average uh, delay uh, of this flow into the stock. Um, so, uh, if uh, there's a big increase in the number of becoming uh, infectious, um, some days later, there'll be a big increase in the number of recovering. Ladies and gentlemen, if there's a big increase in the number of cases here in Saskatchewan, a few days later, there's gonna be a big increase in the number of hospitalizations. And some numbers of days later, there's gonna be a big increase in the number of discharges from the hospital. Um, those are associated with these kind of characteristic delays. Um, people go into the ICU about four weeks later, th excuse me, three weeks later, there'll often be you know, fairly big discharges of, of those people. There's kind of characteristic time units associated with, with processes, be they physiological processes, public health processes, physical processes, or what have you. Okay, so... Um, so let's talk about these first order delays, if we could. Um, we talked about how, you know, in the context of stock and flow models, we have stocks and we have flows. And there's kind of this yin-yang relationship between them. Stocks at any one time determine the values of the flow right now. And the values of the flow dictate over time the evolution of that stock, how it's going to evolve over the next little bit of time. It's the rate of change of that stock. So if it's high, the stock will be going up over time. Um, if it's if it's you know if the flow is negative, it'll be going down over time. Or if there's more outflow than inflow. Um, um, now, uh, each of these is associated with uh, some underlying equations. Um, so each stock um, is associated with an equation. So population P will denote with population will denote with P. Um, and we'll say the rate of change of P equals, and this is the sum of the inflows. In this case, there's only one. And this is minus the rate of the sum of the outflows. And there's exactly one. Um, and you'll notice here that um, we have a, um, an inflow um, on this, just like we did in, in this model, each, each of the one set of first order delay had an inflow and an outflow. The inflow is less important. Sometimes we'll have multiple inflows, but um, for our discussion, we'll assume one inflow. Um, what, what really defines the first order delay though is the fact that the outflow is proportional to the value of the stock. It's like a constant times the value. Um, and there's two ways of phrasing it uh, at the most basic level here minus alpha times P or equally, whoa, sorry, equally much so, we might see it as P divided by tau, where tau is a, is a time, mean time. Um, uh, these are the two different ways. You can phrase this first order delay this way, where tau is the mean time in this stock, or you could phrase it as um, it's the value of the stock times some rate of progression, Okay, um, a rate of progression away from that stock, a chance per, in this case, day of leaving that stock. So if you have a mean time in that stock of 100, 
um, so it would be P over 100, there is, we could rephrase this instead of P over 100, we could write this as what times P, anyone? P over 100 is the same mathematically as what value times P? I'll make it easier for you. Suppose tau were two. So this is P over two. What value that's equal to P times what value? One half. Yeah, one half. Exactly. 0.5 or one half. Yeah, it's the same thing. So you could think of this as having a mean time of two, or you could think of it as progressing with a chance per day of a half. Um, a point, point 0.5, um, a probability of point 0.5 leaving per day. Um, notice it's a per day chance. Um, uh, you might not go today and I'll have a chance tomorrow of leaving a point 0.5. Um, a chance the next day of leaving a point 0.5. It's like flipping a coin every, every time. These are two different ways of showing this. It's, it's uh, point 0.5 times P here or P divided by two. Um, the mean time in the stock is one over the chance per unit time of leaving. So if you have a chance per unit time of leaving a 0.5, you have a mean time in the stock of two. Um, the average amount of time someone spends in the stock is two. Um, uh, and if you have a, uh, uh, a chance per day of leaving a 0.1, one out of, one out of 10, the average number of days you spend in the stock is what? Is 10. 10, ten. yes, it's 10, 10, indeed. Um, well spoken. Um, that's exactly right. Now, if you're feeling confused about this, I, I wanna just give you an intuition, right? Look, um, if we have a bunch of people in the stock, you know, 100 people in the stock, right? 100 people here. Um, and on average, they leave in 10 days. Their average time there is 10 days. About how many of them leave per day? If you have 100 people in there and, and they're there for an average of about 10 days, how many leave per day, roughly? 10, right? Um, about one-tenth of them leave per day. Um, so it's like, on a per day basis, it's like 0.1 times the stock, right? Um, uh, leaving. So this formula, this alpha would be, would be 0.1 for that case, if their mean time in the stock is, is 10. If the mean time in the stock is two days, about half of them leave each day. Um, Got to get them out in two days is the idea. That's not quite true, but but you could think, okay, they they're here for an average of two days, so probably about half leaves the first day. So so if, if your average time here is two days, alpha is going to be 0.5. If your average time here is ten days, alpha is going to be 0.1. It's going to be one tenth of them that leave per day. Um, so the Alpha is one over the mean time, or the mean time is one over alpha. Um, uh, you, can, you can view it either way, okay? Um, uh, these two are interchangeable. Uh, but this is what defines it. The fact that it's, the outflow is proportional to it, just as the stock times some constant, one over tau, or, you know, or, or, or we'll just name it alpha. Um, that's what defines it as a first sort of delay. Um, now, um, this is associated with a goal-seeking behavior. This, this embodies a negative feedback loop. Um, the larger the population, the more people are going to come out here per unit time. If there's nobody in the population, nobody's going to come out. If there's 10 people in the population, a small number are gonna come out compared to if there's a million people. And what this is saying is the bigger this is, the faster they'll come out and that will tend to draw this down um, to be smaller. Um, so it's 
it's associated with this negative feedback loop. The bigger it is, we'll, we'll draw it down. We'll bring it back to uh, the median. Um, and the best way to see this is with um, an inflow and outflow. So I'd like you to, to have your logics ready and let's go into this in our remaining 20 or so minutes. So we're gonna create a new model, boom. And we're gonna call it first order delay, okay? Um, here we go. And it's gonna be associated with a time unit of days, boom. Time unit, ladies and gentlemen, of days. There we go. So here we have a new model, a new slate, a new theory, and new behavior that will follow that. Okay, so what did I do? File, new model, we called it first order delay, and I picked this to be days and said finish. Okay. Um, okay, so we're going to go to the palette. We're going to go to the system dynamics area of the palette. We're going to draw in uh, a flow, and we're going to call it population. I like to I like to capitalize the names of my stocks. I'm, I'm rather particular about naming, and and I want to capitalize it, and I'll make it a, a nice big kind of um, rectangle. Okay, I'm going to have a flow in, um, and I'm going to call this inflow. Okay, I, I like um, much uh, creative. Uh, uh, flourish here. And I'm going to have a flow out and I'm going to call it outflow. Um, oops, look at that. The fact that this is, what's wrong here? What am I missing here? I can spot an error here. What is the error? There's no green. There's no green. You have to make it green. Green is the color. Stocks and flows are the game. So you, um, you need that to be green, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Otherwise, you could be thinking it's connected and it's not. Um, and that can end you up in some confusing circumstances. Okay, so we're going to have here um, a parameter uh, called um, uh, mean time in population. Um, and uh, I will drag that down here. And we're going to put a link here to indicate that it depends on the population too, okay? And the mean time in the population is going to be um, 20, 20 days, okay? Mm -hmm. And um, the outflow, um, if this is a mean time, I'll tell you the outflow, the, the flows from a given stock have to be the same unit of measure as the, as the stock itself, but divided by the time unit. So what is the formula for this have to be, to be dimensionally correct, to be correct in terms of, of, of its units? Um, oh, here's a thing measured in days. That's what this is. We're measuring time in days. That's what we said for the model as a whole, that it's measured in days. Um, and this, this flow is going to be, is going to need a formula. What does that formula have to be to be dimensionally correct? The unit of this flow has to be the unit of this stock um, divided by time. So what does this formula need to be? Population divided mean time uh, yeah, population. population divided by. I mean, you you've seen it. You could, you know, people in general should, you know, recognize the pattern. But it has to be that way for it to be dimensionally correct. If this is people and this is days, we're measuring the outflow and people per day. It you you can't forget. You know, if if you think about it. it it can't be population times mean time and population. That wouldn't make sense. The flow would be associated with a unit of people days. No, no, no. This is people per day. So it's got to be divided by this. Remember that, ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to the final exam. Please don't forget that. <laughs> you you got to 
you can develop really good intuitions for these things and cross check them. Okay, um, so we're gonna have that. Um, for the inflow, we're going to set it here to be um, uh, to be 20 um, coming, uh, no, we'll set it to be 10, 10, okay? 10 people per day coming in. Starting at time zero, they're gonna come in. Just like that, okay? Uh, great, there's one more thing we have to fill in. What haven't we filled in yet? Can anyone riddle me, riddle me that? What thing have we not yet specified? We specified a, a formula for the inflow. We specified a formula for the outflow. We specified this parameter, um, uh, default value. What haven't we specified? Anyone? Initial population. The initial value of the stock. Remember, stocks um, evolve according to their flows, but they need an initial value. After that, they're driven by their flow. The flows dictate their evolution after that. Um, so we need an initial value and we'll leave it at zero. Okay, and we'll just have it at zero. It, that was the default value, but we'll use that in this case. Not always the case. Um, uh, well, actually, I'm sorry. What am I, what am I doing? Um, I should add to your lesson in some way. I'm gonna set it to be, uh, I'm gonna set it to be, um, let's say uh, 50 people, okay? Okay, um, 50 people in the stock. Um, to, to ease the math on your part, I'm gonna make it 40, okay? Because um, I'm gonna riddle you this. So what's gonna happen with this stock? We have coming in 10, 10 people per day. Um, the stock starts at a value of 40. What would that imply the outflow is? Anyone? Remember the mean time in the population is 20. If the stock has a value of 40, what's gonna be the outflow in people per day? Uh, two. Two, and where'd that two come from? That's exactly correct. Where'd it come from? Whence did that come? It came from where? What, did, what calculation is performed to get the two? Uh, population of a mean time in population. Yeah, exactly. You just, you know, you, you compute this in your head. And that's exactly right. So we have 10 people per day coming in and two people per day leaving. What is that going to lead this uh, first order delay to do? Anyone? What's going to happen? If we have inflow greater than outflow, what's going to happen? The population is going to increase. The population is going to increase. It's like water's coming into your bathtub a lot faster than it's draining. Um. So the water in the, in the bathtub is gonna rise. I, I prefer to talk about bathtubs and toilets, but I think you can have an idea in mind for a toilet scenario too, where the inflow might be greater than the outflow. Um, so the population will rise, right? Um, but will it rise forever? What's gonna happen? As it rises, what's gonna happen? As this goes up, is the, are the inflow and outflow going to stay forever the same? And the imbalance? Well, the outflow is going to increase? The outflow will increase because it depends on the population. And will the, so the outflow will increase. Okay. Because be uh, related directly with other. Yeah. And so if population rises, the outflow will rise. And that's going to mean. The inflow may still be initially bigger than the outflow, but it'll be less of a gap, right? And so what does that mean in terms of how the stock will be changing? It's going to be, so, so as the population rises, it's going to be a, 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 a there's, there was originally a big gap, right? Between 10 people coming in and two going out. And that's a gap of, you know, 10 people faster coming in than are leaving, um, or eight people faster rather. 10 were coming in, two were leaving. So we're accumulating eight per day in this population. Oh man, uh, the population is rising in Saskatchewan. And, um, and then, um, it's lucky because government's trying to kill us all. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, population is rising, but um, 
and, 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 and eight, and as the popular reparation rises, the outflow is going to increase. Um, and that's going to lead to more of a gap or less of a gap uh, in terms of inflow being greater than the outflow. It's going to lead to- Less of a gap. <laughs> less of a gap. And so what will that mean um, in terms of the population? Will it still be rising? If, if that gap becomes smaller, um, so the inflow is still greater than the outflow, but it's less bigger than the outflow, it's going to start. The, the will the population still rise? Yes, but a lot slower until it hits even. Ah, okay, okay. So, so you've discovered a general pattern here. Let's go run this because we look. Even the most technical of us are really bad about thinking this precisely through in our head. This is exactly the sort of thing a computer can do really easily, right? So let's let's go and and we'll we'll go and and watch this, right? Um here we go and we're gonna go uh take a look at this and 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 watch as this change changes. So we'll we'll speed this up. But you could start to see the curve bending, ladies and gentlemen. You notice this is time zero. We're up to time 18 now. And what you see is, is um, uh, you know, an illustration of this phenomenon. Just as was said, um, the stock is rising, but it's rising less quickly. As time goes on, it's rising slower. It's rising slower because um, there's less and less of a gap between the inflow and outflow. Outflow is catching up to inflow, right? The value of the stock is rising, so outflow is rising. Inflow isn't changing. And so it's getting closer and closer. And it's kind of zeroing in on the value of the inflow, right? Um, initially, the inflow before time zero was kind of zero. Um, and now it's kind of catching up with the inflow. The value of the outflow is 9.423, and, and here it was 10. Um, and it's rising. And it's going to rise until what? Uh, you, you said it earlier, and I'd like to amplify it for the class. Until, until it breaks even? Until it breaks even. Outflow is equal to inflow. And at that point, it'll be in balance. Um, and it won't rise anymore. Mm -hmm. um, it'll just be in the state of balance. Inflow equals outflow. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what our hospitals are moving towards, incidentally, where inflow equals outflow. That's going to turn the hospitalization around. Now, we can, we can perturb this. So I'm going to pause this here. And I'm going to say, suppose suddenly you were to change this. Um, suppose I were to edit this value. Um, uh, so I'm going, to, I'm going to go, how did I do that? I closed that window. I clicked on the stock. And I'm going to edit it. And I'm going to say, I'm going to make it 150 instead of 200. What's going to happen now? Can anyone tell me what's going to happen? It was 200. Uh, it was 200 when uh, this, or, or just about 200 when uh, the inflow equals the outflow. I've changed it to 150. What's going to happen now? Can anyone tell me what's going to happen? Be cool. Yeah, it's going to start rising again because it wants to get back to that state of equilibrium. It wants to get back to where outflow equals inflow. And if I lower it to 150, outflow will be below inflow. And so inflow will be accumulating people, right? Outflow won't be able to drain quick enough. Inflow will be accumulating people and the stock will be rising back to its kind of natural value where out inflow equals outflow. And I could perturb it again and it will bounce back again and, and it, will, it will be seeking the state where outflow is equal inflow. So I just lowered the value of the stock. Suppose I instead raise it. Maybe let, let's suppose I raise it to 500. What's going to happen then? Anyone? Suppose I raise this to 500. How did I do that? I clicked on it and I clicked on this area and, and entered 500. What's going to happen now? Can anyone tell me? I raised the stock to 500. Uh, the gonna... population is going to decrease now, but towards yeah. the same equilibrium value. And why will it decrease? What's drawing it down? Why is it going down? Hmm? What, what's drawing it down? Why is because it? Because 
the population divided divided by the mean time in, in population is greater than the inflow. Exactly. So you have so many people there, the outflow is greater than inflow. And it wants to get back to the state of balance. And the state of balance is the state at which what is true. It's in balance. This population is in balance when what equals what. I heard it earlier in, many times. Inflow equals outflow. Inflow equals outflow. So if the population is out of kilter with that, it'll bring it back. It restores its balance. This is what a first order delay does. This is what a balancing loop does. It seeks stability. It comes back to the stable point. So if it's too low, as it started with zero, it rose until outflow equal inflow, about 200, right? And then I knocked it down and it came back to that because it wants that. It, if, I, if, if outflow is less than inflow, it's gonna rise until they're the same. If, if it's too high, outflow will be greater than inflow and it's gonna drop until it equals that magic balance, right? Um, this magic balance where inflow is equal to outflow. And that's exactly what happens. It is seeking stability. It is enforcing stability. You get hungry, you eat, you get thirsty, you go drink something, you get bad marks on an assignment, you try to do better next time, whatever. Um, our lives are filled with these regulatory processes, the things that keep us warm, even when it's minus 30 outside today, like today, our homeostatic processes, our thermal balance. These things are filled with these, these processes that keep us back in balance. Even when we fight disease, it's our immune system keeping us, trying to keep us in balance. Um, this is an example of a regulatory system, a system that is self-regulating. It brings itself back into balance. And that's associated with a first order delay. Um, so this is, this is a first order delay here. It seeks balance. Now, you may ask, where is the negative feedback loop here? I've mentioned that there's a negative feedback. And for this, given the limited time, I'll just um, look um, uh, you know, in this uh, diagram, there's the negative feedback. There's a link from population to, to, uh, to this. This is associated with a plus. The more population, the more deaths there will be. The lower the population, the less deaths there will be compared to what otherwise would have been the case, all those things being equal. Um, uh, but then the more of this there is, the outflow, it tends to draw down the population. So the other part of the loop that's shown here is this one here. And it's a negative loop going back because increase in deaths tends to lower population compared to what it would have been all other things being equal. So, so a, a, a first order delay is associated with a balancing feedback. Balancing feedback seeks stability. Um, and so if you, have no in, if you have no inflow at all, this will draw down the stock. If you have, uh, uh, and, and yeah, and, and so that's the dynamics of a, of a uh, first order delay. Once again, structure drives behavior. This has a characteristic behavior that we've seen. It seeks stability where outflows equals inflow. Now, when you built up that first model, um, with me, this uh, and and you elaborated it. This must have seemed like a lot of arbitrary rules, you know, all these things divide by this, divide by that, divide by that. But if you think of it, three out of the four flows and stock pairs here were first order delays. First order delays are everywhere. They are the dominant form of building blocks at a at a higher level than just stock separate from flow. They are the kind of molecules um, that build together these atoms that out of which we build these models, these stock and flow models. So this is an example TB model that we had built, gosh, uh, 20, uh, 2009 or something, it, it came out. Um, uh, and uh, here, all of these flows, except for these red ones are first order delays. And the red ones, these ones are associated with historic values and this is associated with infection. We'll be getting to the infection flow in a whole module in this course uh, within another lecture or two. Um, so, you know, most of these 
flows are, are forced order delays. Um, and uh, in, in many other models, okay, um, we are getting uh, too many windows open. That's why, okay. Um, uh, so, you know, this is an example of a model filled with, uh, with first order delays. And we can have many, many others as well. Um, when you look at one of these models, uh, often the first order delays crowd out the non-first order delays. Um, there's more of them there. Um, so they are the main building block when it comes to these sort of models. First order delays are more subtle than, than we're used to seeing at first glance. Um, uh, they, they lead to this regulatory behavior that is key to systems, um, but they're very useful ways of describing systems. Systems where people are in a certain state, let's say for a certain amount of time before leaving, or where they're in a certain state and they have a, a chance per unit time of, of leaving. Um, what we're going to be exploring together shortly is another pattern, which is a communicable pattern. Uh, spread of contagion, whether it's rumors, conspiracy theories, pathogen, um, uh, the, the spread of, of information, the diffusion of innovations uh, can be described in this, in this other form, which is nonlinear. This is a linear form. The outflow is proportional. It's the value of the, the stock out of which it comes times a constant. This other form will be nonlinear. It'll depend on two to tango. Susceptible, you need a susceptible and you need an infective to get an infection. And uh, we'll be exploring that uh, shortly. First order delays though, have another form. And we don't have time to talk about it right now. I'm gonna think about whether to ask you to watch a video on it or to, uh, I'll deliver you a, a brief, module of, of next lecture specifically on it, where first order delays follow a target. They can be viewed as target following, where the outflow can be viewed as following the target of the inflow. Um, uh, but we can, we can formulate them more generally than that. And that can lead to some real insights. So um, ladies and gentlemen, um, we've seen uh, that structure drives behavior. We've seen that um, a lot of our models uh, are built up out of uh, building blocks called first order delays that are regulatory in nature. Um, they self-regulate. Um, and uh, we've seen that they too give rise to sort of characteristic behavior. Um, and they embody these negative feedback loops and seek balance where outflow equals inflow. Uh, uh, it turns out the outflow is the delayed version of the inflow. We didn't have time to show it, but if we had frobbed the inflow, if we had made it change suddenly, the outflow would follow just in a kind of smoothed way. It will seek a new balance equal to the new inflow, um, but it will take a bit of time to, getting there, to get there, um, just like it took a bit of time to get to this point of balance. Um, so um, step-by-step step we learn here. Um, we're following these examples, and um, I'm going to see if I can give you another challenge for next time to expand your thinking about these compartmental models. Um, and once again, we'll go over that together. Um, so that's all for today. Um, after a bit of a health break, um, uh, as I said, uh, things are associated with delays when one takes an action. There's a after a delay, there's a consequence that follows. So um, I'll be taking a bit of a break uh, after this, and um, I'll be back in about five or 10 minutes to hold my office hours as I am wont. And I look forward to seeing any of you there. Thank you very much. Stay safe. It's a dangerous world out there. I don't want you to, to end up getting tangled with a uh, system pushed to its limit, a uh, health system, OK? Um, uh, and I look forward to seeing some of you shortly and the rest of you next time. Stay safe and take care. Bye-bye.